The flesh is nothing more than metal. Blood is nothing more than glue. And the mind is simply a program. Fidgets are glitches. Illnesses are malfunctions. The human experience is nothing more than a bunch of cheap animatronics on stage, aware of the shallow void, but ultimately ignoring it with distractions of fluff and fantasy. If I was God, I'd ask for a fucking refund. So this episode is about the talent show at Riverdale High. Me, 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 la, 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 la. Fucking dreadful. Absolutely terrible. Betty Cooper, you are devoid of talent. You will always be in the shadow of Polly Cooper. Your performance is a reflection of you. Something that shouldn't exist. The death penalty hasn't been abolished. Solely because you are alive. From the shower, I'll get you to me. Oh God, is that your fucking voice? Never talk again. You are shit. You are every animal shit rolled into one. Veronica Lodge, you disgust me. Fuck you. Ah, uh, alas, behold the vanishing American. That. That was the most beautiful performance I have ever seen. I usually consider myself a tough guy, a Sigma male, if you will, but this, this raw emotion of pure passion brought tears to my eyes. This, my friends, was truly a shock to the soul. Reggie Mantle's artistic approach to the metaphysical interpretation of America's legacy was a bold approach. This is what art is about. A connection. A touch. Thank you, Mr. Mantle, for touching me. God bless you. Anyway, Jughead accidentally makes some invisible paint or some shit and they all get invisible or some shit, whatever. We find out Veronica is a top and Betty is a bottom. Hi, Mr. Weatherby. Oh, oops. Hello, Betty. Hmm. Don't tell me you're working on imitations too, Veronica. Oh, yes, right there. Uh-huh. Okay, so the principal mistakes Betty's voice as Veronica's impression of Betty. My, my, what a talented group of students we have at Riverdale. Is it really that impress- Is it really that impressive, you fatty, fat, aching for Arby's, Big Mac attacking, Jinkies for Twinkies, Scooby Snacks, slacking motherfucker? Is Veronica going to go on stage to do impressions of her friend? Yeah, that will really knock the fucking crowd, stupid ass. So wacky shit happens, blah, 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 and oh my god, that fucking head turn. Hey, wait a minute. The paint's beginning to wear off. The gang performs their stupid talent show acts, and the principal grooms the students. Typical high school day. It was the 60s, man. Well, you know how bad your pa needed a paint job. What? Oh, well, let's head for Pop's Chocolate Shop, gang. <laughs> Jesus, Joseph, and Mary Jane Watson, what the actual H-E double hockey stick is this? This is a Final Destination 2 about to fucking happen. Cars behind the gang won't be able to see signals. Children playing on the street will be flattened because they didn't know there was a car in front of them. These fuckers are a menace to society. Fucking satanic magic. Which is ironic because Archie, for a while, had a reputation for being Neon Genesis Evangelical. It's a bit confusing, so I'll keep it slim. In the late 60s, Al Hartley, a born-again Christian and long-running artist for Archie, asked the president of Archie Comics if he could use the characters for Spire, Spire, a Christian comic company. It was approved and there was a line of Archie Comics with Christian messages. 
The run was quite short. While the main Archie comics never particularly were religious, it was still very conscious about maintaining a wholesome image. The president of Archie Comics was a huge proponent of the Comics Code. The Comic Code was formed by comic publishers as an appeasement to the criticism that comic books were poisoning the minds of teens and children. <laughs> there would be a set of guidelines for major publishers and investors. They were incentivized to only produce comics that were approved. Now, there is a popular misconception that the Comics Code was a government policy, which is flat out BS. There was still many comics without the code. Granted, sloppy, sleazy, independent books that were hard to find, but still, major game players like DC Comics took a risk by abandoning the code for one of my favorite comics, Saga of the Swamp Thing, eventually having it be a part of DC's new, at the time, adult-aimed imprint, Vertigo Comics. Shot callers in the industry saw less of an incentive to care about the code, seeing that the moral panic of the 80s and 90s was more in fetch with metal and hip-hop. You don't want to do that. You want to turn your feet out, and I'm going to do this backwards, and that's what makes it look like hip-hop. Parents stopped McWhining about their kids reading action comics. No one gave a shit if fighting in comics glamorized violence or such. Look. The American Protestant went from morally conscious dudes who called themselves pacifists into vulgar, drunken, wannabe, badass hams. Who wish the motherfucker would. I wish the motherfucker would just fight me right fucking now. Fucking pin me down and, and touch my bottom, touch my body, and you maybe buy me dinner and we, we can talk about the... The, the weather and baseball and stroke my hair. Ooh, I wish a motherfucker would. Also, the concept of grown ass nerds spending their money on comics for their demographics gave them an incentive to ditch the code. Freeze frame, time out. So you might be saying, Sint, what the fuck does Archie play into this? Now let's rewind back to when the code was in its evolution. Bill Gaines was the co-editor of EC Comics, known for its horror, crime, and satirical comics. Gaines was not a believer that comics were causing juvenile delinquency. However, he was aware of the cutthroat nature of the industry and was a part of the founding of the comics code as he thought the appeasement to critics would be better than the possibility of a government-ran regulation. A sort of paper tiger pitch where it was assumed that the code would have been lenient towards most comics, especially his since he was a part of the code itself. However, this turned out to be a big mistake for Gaines. Wham! President of Archie Comics, John Goldwater, took control of the code. It's speculated he did this for two reasons. One as a big stick to knock out competition. Number two, good boy points. When you have control of the regulations, you get a bit more leeway with some of your raunchy content. Archie was portrayed as being wholesome, all-American, clean, religious-friendly stuff, while also amping the fuck out of sex appeal. A wooga jaw drops to the fucking floor. Hot chick heaven. Okay, ladies, you're gonna get frostbite. Honestly, if you pick some of these 60s and 70s issues of Archie from a flea market, there's a high chance the pages are covered in dried up boomer splooge. Here we go! And number three. Goldwater was extremely butthurt when EC Comics took the wholesome, humble characters from Archie Comics and made parodies. From Archie being a dog to a Riverdale orgy, Goldwater had a grudge against EC Comics and fucked them over. Archie used to be really donut steel with their characters. 
For a while, Archie fan fiction was prohibited because some fan works and parodies had lots of sexual content in them. What a fucking shock! Including the 1974 art house film, A Hard Day for Archie, which was renamed Hot Stuff for marketing. While not a flat out porno movie, it was still a sexploitation comedy with sex and nudity, using the characters' names. Shit like this really pissed off the Archie comics. Fanfictionnet.com actually got a cease and desist from Archie to remove any fan fictions involving their characters. Uh, stay out of Riverdale! Another note would be Robot Chicken. That old Final Destination Riverdale spoof was actually removed from rerun streaming and even the Season 2 DVD release for a while. Archie Comics complained that showing the characters dying would harm their family-friendly brand. There was a period where this was actually pretty hard to find. I actually saw it on TV when I was channel flipping as a young kid, and years later was confused why I couldn't find it. Hell, if Adult Swim tried harder, this could have been considered lost media material. But Adult Swim did put it back in re-airings and even included it as an extra on the Season 5 DVD. That little feud is funny because Robot Chicken recently made an entire episode fucking with Archie in the game. By the 2010s, all the oldies who started Archie are gone, and the new front runners of the brand have relaxed their old ways. The comic code is pretty much phased out. The rule that the characters must stay in one art style has been abandoned. Parodies and adaptions with darker subject material are welcomed. I'm not going to tell you the new main Archie comics are anything outstanding, but the company's new approach was probably for the best to keep the franchise relevant in the 21st century. At least it's something more than those comics you see at the grocery store. So you might be saying, Synth, why do you know so much about Archie comics? And my answer is... <laughs>